Hey everybody, welcome to MedKids Provider Spotlight, where we are interviewing the really most amazing people in private practice. Um, we like to interview people all over the United States and give us a little insight in the world of healthcare and health and wellness. So today we have a really awesome special guest, Dr. Margaret Hall. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Yes. So I want to dive in a little bit because you have a very interesting background and a very interesting practice. So could you tell us a little bit about you and your story? Yeah, well, I um, fortunately knew by the time I was five years old that I wanted to do this work. Um, and it never varied from then. I was I was the kind of kid that people came to with their problems. So it was natural that I would be a psychotherapist. And um, I, I went to school, got a PhD, practiced traditional psychotherapy for 17 years and had a ton of my own therapy, all different kinds. And I was not happy with my own therapy or with the work with my clients. And that's when I started to kind of pray for a process or a teacher or something that would really work and work fast and work deep. And that's when I met the co-creator of Inner Bonding, Dr. Erica Chopich, and she had half the process and I had half the process. So of course we had to meet and we put it together with the help of higher, higher guidance. And that was about 40 years ago. And so, and I, I've been doing this work with people for 55 years, but as I said, the first 17 were not as productive and as gratifying as what I've been doing since then. And so now I work and I still work with inner bonding with people. And it's just amazing. This process has been evolving all this time and it's completely changed my life and the lives of, I'd say now hundreds of thousands of people around the world. And um, I still am very excited about it. I love that. And I love how you took your own experience and your dissatisfaction in your own experience and turned it around and said, nope, not going to have this. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to yeah. figure it out for myself and then for other people. And so right. I right. think that's terrific. And I can really see that passion inside of you to kind of really get down into the core of things and make sure that people can heal and, and feel better. And so what would you say that you commonly address with people who are, who are coming to see you? What, what do they you know, you might get an email inquiry or, you know, someone calls you. What things are they commonly, you know, asking you about? What are they struggling with? Well, they're struggling with anxiety and depression. They're struggling with guilt, shame. They're struggling with feelings of aloneness and emptiness. They're struggling with various addictions. They're struggling a lot in relationships. Yeah. Um, and so we, we deal with all of these because actually with all of that, there's one core issue, which we call self-abandonment. People don't know how to take loving care of themselves. They didn't, we didn't learn, I didn't learn it in my family. Most people don't have good role models for loving self-care. And so inner bonding teaches people what it really means to love themselves. It's, it's a lot more than getting a massage or getting their nails done. It's a, it's a deep inner process of learning to take responsibility for your feelings, learning to learn from your feelings, learning to connect to a higher source of love and, and truth and wisdom um, to tap into, to know what's loving to yourself. So it's a six step process that um, really allows people to heal on that deep level. And what happens when people learn to love themselves is that like in relationships, a lot of people get into relationships to get love. And, and they come in, you know, with some emptiness, with some neediness, and then they're each trying to get love from each other. And then they're disappointed and they have conflict. But when people learn to love themselves and fill themselves up with love, then they're able to share their love. And so I'm very successful with relationships, helping people even on the brink of divorce to heal their relationships. Even if they haven't had sex in 10 years, 
they get turned back on to each other. It's absolutely wonderful when they learn to love themselves. Everything changes. And their their various addictions are, are there to cover up the pain. But most of the pain they don't realize is coming from abandoning themselves. And so when they learn to love themselves, they don't need all of these addictions. And, and I also work with a lot of people who have had a huge amount of trauma, huge, huge abuse. And inner bonding is an amazing process for healing abuse. Yes. You know, I'd really like to understand a little bit more about inner bonding in that process. Can you explain in, in just a little bit about, you know, what that what that really looks like? Yeah, so it's a six-step process, and I'll briefly go through the steps. Sure. Um, for, for most of us, we learned really early to get up in our head because our feelings are in our body, and when we're little, we can't handle big feelings. So we learn to disconnect from our body, to dissociate from the feelings. So step one is learning to get back in your body with your feelings and be willing to learn from them and take responsibility for them because our feelings have so much information. They tell us whether we're loving ourselves or abandoning ourselves. They tell us what's happening with other people, whether someone's dangerous, whether someone's loving, whether someone's empty and needy and pulling or whether somebody is somebody you can connect with. And so our feelings have an enormous amount of information. Um, and when you learn to manage the pain, then you're no longer afraid to be in your body. And inner bonding is a fabulous process for learning to learn from and manage your pain. So step one is getting in your body, being willing to feel your feelings, especially your pain. Step two, inner bonding is based on a concept of intention, that there's only two intentions. One is the intention to learn about loving yourself and sharing your love with others. And the other is the intention to protect with various forms of controlling behavior to avoid pain and try and feel safe, which doesn't work, you know, which is causing most of the pain. And so in step two, we, we breathe into our heart, we open our heart, and we consciously decide that we want to open to learning. And we teach people to open to their higher self, their higher guidance, whatever that is for them. And they invite the love and compassion and strength and wisdom and courage and truth of their higher self into their heart. And that's what we call creating the loving adult. We have to be a loving adult in order to learn. And we're a loving adult when we're open to learning and connected with our higher self. And then we go back in, let's say in step one, we breathed in and we found that we were feeling anxious. Yep. which of course a lot of people feel anxious. And so we go back into the anxiety and we're asking, um, imagine that the that your feeling self is your soul self, our soul that's in the body and often communicates through feelings. We can call that an inner child. So you're asking that feeling part of you, what am I doing? What am I telling you? How am I treating you? What am I not doing? that's making you feel this way. And then you go in and you let that feeling speak to you. And the feeling might say, well, you're, you're judging me. You're telling me that I'm not good enough. I'll, I'll never be good enough. I'll never, I'll, I'll end up on the streets. Nobody will ever love me. Oh, I better do everything right. I, I better not make a mistake. I better perform right and look right and be perfect. All of these things are things that we tell ourselves from the part of us that we call the wounded self or, or the ego self. And this part of us has absorbed so many false beliefs, has absorbed the wounded selves of our parents and caregivers. And so like if we were told we're dumb and stupid, which many kids are, then that part of us is saying, oh, you're dumb and stupid a lot. And, if, and that's going to make you anxious. Yeah. And you don't realize that you're the one causing it. Now, you might not be causing all of it. There's other reasons for anxiety. There's like eating junk food <laughs> affects the brain and can cause anxiety and depression, all kinds of things. But this is a major way that self-abandonment causes so much pain. Once we understand what we're doing, then we go a little deeper into that wounded part and say, there must be a good reason that you're judging this 
inner child, because the inner child is a spark of the divine, is beautiful, is wonderful, is our ability to love and, and has our gifts and so many beautiful things. Must be a good reason you're judging that. And the wounded self might say, well, yeah, that's the only way that I can motivate you. If I don't judge you, you're just going to sit on the couch and veg out, which is a huge false belief. And once we understand how we're treating yourself, what we're telling ourselves, and why, then in step four, we go up to our higher guidance. And we're asking two things. One is, is that true? Is it true that I'm dumb and stupid? Is it true that I'm not good enough? Is it true I have to be perfect to be okay? Is it true that the only way I'm okay is if other people approve of me? Is it true that I can control how people feel about me? So many false beliefs. And we listen for the answer. And then we say, what would be loving to us? What's the loving action? What's in my highest good? What would a loving adult do? And yeah. we open and listen for the answer. And, and, and you know, young parents who want to be good parents with a the baby, they're naturally asking that. They don't realize that there are, oh, the baby's crying. What does the baby need? They're naturally asking that. And then once you get the answer, you take the action, whatever it is that you're guided to take. And then in step six, you check back in. And if you've taken a loving action, you're going to feel relief, a lot of relief. Yeah, I love how, you know, when you explain that, all the six, six steps, you know, it feels like, oh, yeah, like, you know, like there's this aha moment where it's like, you know, it can be so simple. Yes, and, it can. And it can. And I think in our minds, we like to complicate things. Mm -hmm. We like to convince ourselves of things. And I think it's really great what you're doing because, you know, it's true. There's a lot of, you know, probably early hurts, you know, early things that have happened in our childhood, a lot of trauma, mm -hmm. even as adults that form thoughts about ourselves that we that we carry through every every day you know I, mm -hmm. I don't I'm not good enough or like hey I'm not smart enough and you know and I love that you're you're really bringing it back to that core of you know you know the loving the the child and so I think right. that's, I think that's really great and very positive too yeah yeah and and, and one of the things that people don't realize is how much they abandon themselves, not only judging themselves and not only staying up in their head and ignoring their feelings, but turning to various addictions and numbing out their feelings. You know, it's like if a child came to you upset and you just went and grabbed a drink or something instead of attending to the child, the child's going to feel rejected and abandoned. Yeah. And also, we we make other people responsible. It's like if you had a child and you kept trying to give the child away. Here, you have to approve of the child mm -hmm. or the child's not okay. We do that all the time. We make other people responsible for saying you're okay or you're not okay. And so these four ways of abandoning oneself are very key. Judging, staying in your head, numbing out with addictions, and making others responsible create most of the pain in yeah. people's life other than the pain of life like losing a loved one or people oh. being really mean and unloving there's the pain of life of of, of heartbreak and grief and loneliness and, and helplessness over others but these feelings like anxiety and depression and guilt and shame these feelings are being caused by us by self-abandonment yeah and you know i I like that you said that because there also needs to be the accountability piece, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, you said, yeah, you know, people will just numb out, you know, they'll have the drink, they'll do whatever, they'll ignore, they'll blame someone else or throw the responsibility on someone else. And I love that mm -hmm. this is really about your own personal journey. This is yeah. not about what they said they've done. This is about you, how you're interpreting and how you can dispel of that. And I think that's a really positive and really unique way of looking at things. Yeah, and, and it's a roadmap. People can learn these six steps and if they follow the roadmap, they will get where they need to go. They will get to that sense of relief. They will eventually learn to define their own self-worth because once you learn to connect with a higher source of love and truth, you start to see 
who you really are inside. You start to see your goodness, your caring, your compassion, your 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 gifts that you've been given and to value those rather than saying, oh, my worth is on how much money I have or the kind of house I have or the car I have. And instead of defining ourselves that way or by people's approval, we're defining ourselves by who we truly are in our soul. And that makes all the difference in the world. When you know how beautiful you are inside, you don't you don't even think about what other people think of you. Yeah. It just doesn't even occur to you because you know how wonderful you are. I that I believe. Absolutely. And what would you say to people right now that are kind of thinking to go, hmm, this is interesting. What would be the next few steps that they could do today um, in self-healing? Um, what would you suggest that they they think about or they do um, just to take that next step forward, no matter how small or how big that might be? Yeah, there, well, there's a couple things. One is to start getting present in your body, because if you're not with your feelings, you can't learn anything. And the other is just to start asking, even if you don't believe anything is there, what would be loving to me right now? What's the loving action right now? It's amazing. Even people who don't believe in anything start getting information about what's loving to themselves. But I really suggest on our website at innerbonding.com, we have a free seven-day course. And this will give people the whole outline of inner bonding. And that's what I suggest people start with is learn learn the basics of inner bonding. It, uh, some people have emailed me that all they've done is follow the free course and their life changed. That's fantastic. That's a great and easy step, which kind of leads me in to my last question is if you could tell us all um, any other resources or where else people can find you um, so they might be able to follow up with you, ask questions, or just frankly, get to know more. Yeah, so they can go to innerbonding.com. Um, there, there are many, many resources. I have many 30-day courses, Love Yourself, um, relationship courses, courses to connect with your guidance, many different courses. Um, I do a bi-monthly masterclass for an hour and a half every other Wednesday where uh, I, I bring people through inner bonding and talk on a topic and then work with people so people can actually see the process at work. And that's very powerful for people. I also work with people individually in groups. We have a fabulous uh, facilitator training program. And so we have many trained facilitators. People can't afford me. There's somebody they could afford. And uh, and we have a um, inner bonding village, which is a member site. People can get three free sessions when they join and, and really get some help, get some support. And so there, there's many, many ways. I've got 12 published books out there. People can, one of the ways of learning inner bonding is to buy the inner bonding workbook and work through it. I have a recent book called Lonely No More, The Astonishing Power of Inner Bonding. Um, that will take people through the whole process. So um, there's just many more expensive ways and less expensive ways and free ways on the website of learning inner bonding. We really want to support people in any way we can to learn this process. That's amazing. I love that you have really a Goldilocks recipe for any type of person out there, you know, with any type of budget um, to even just get access. So I think it's really wonderful that you're doing um, for people and for your community is just providing that um, no matter what it looks like to them, free, most expensive, least expensive. There's so many resources out there that you've provided people. So thank you for doing that and a world that we could all use a little bit more help in this arena for sure. Yeah, and 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 it's really important to us to make this available for people. So that's why we offer so many different things and so many ways of people learning inner bonding. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Paul. This has been amazing experience we have learned so much today and folks feel free to you know reach out to dr paul there's so many great resources she had just mentioned so again thank you so much for coming on provider spotlight with us and hope to have you again thank you so much thank you